Hey guys, Andy here. So it feels like an eternity since I've done a device unboxing, but today we're looking at the OnePlus 8 Pro. Um, this is the 8 gig version with 128 gig of RAM. Um, it's quite interesting the way that OnePlus have gone this year. So they've got the OnePlus 8 regular and the OnePlus 8 Pro. The regular, I would suggest, is the device that we would normally have got from OnePlus. I think, to be fair, someone else explained it this way. It might have been MKBHD, I'm not sure. So you've got OnePlus 8 at 599 and 699, depending on the storage and the RAM. And then you've got the Pro at 799 and 899, again, depending on storage and RAM. Um, and the Pro is, so the, the OnePlus 8 regular is your usual sort of, it's quite well priced, it's still pretty good, but there's still a few compromises. And then you've got the Pro, which is kind of OnePlus saying, right, this is our flagship. Forget flagship killer, this is an actual flagship phone. But it's still not a bad price at 800 and 900 pounds. It's still a bit cheaper than the sort of four figures you're looking at for some of the flagships. So let's dive straight in and get this thing unboxed. First things you notice is it's kind of weird shaped box. It's a very long, elongated box. Um, let's go ahead and make our way in. So they do have a bit of a tendency, OnePlus, to uh, to do to give a good unboxing experience. I still remember the, the original OnePlus was a similar kind of soft touch red box um, and all really well, really nicely presented. And this is looking like it's going to be a similar sort of experience, which excites me a little in itself. Now, regular viewers will know that I went with the Pixel 4 recently, well, recently, six or seven months ago, whatever it might have been, because I just fancied the smaller device again. If I was going to be persuaded back to a bigger device, OnePlus were probably going to be the ones that would do it. Um, I'm not a massive Samsung fan. I wasn't overly keen on the Ultra, uh, the 20 Ultra, S20 Ultra. But I did have the OnePlus 7 Pro. I can't remember if it was a Pro back then. Um, with the pop-up camera. And it was a really nice phone, really nice phone. Which is why I thought I want to give the... OnePlus 8 Pro, a bit of a whirl. So there it is coming out of the box. Already I can see that's a pretty big defined camera bump. But the camera is one area which apparently they really have uh, made some improvements. But let's leave the phone just for, this, for the moment. Oh, okay. There's a SIM eject tool, which I'm guessing probably should be attached to one of these bits of something. Safety information, not so bothered. Quick start guide, I think we'll probably cope. Highest SAR value. Um, what is a SAR value? Are those, are they stickers or what is that? I guess they've got to be stickers, I can't, I can't entirely, oh yeah, yeah, I can see they're stickers, all right, my friends call me for that, okay. Yeah, I mean, all right, fair enough. EU contract, invitation letter. Oh, and I'm supposed to break, oh, that's where the tool fell out of, look. Now, oh, I don't know, well, okay, I'll have a look, I suppose. If anyone's going to open up the invitation letter, I suppose it should be me. So let's see. There it is. Um, six years ago we started OnePlus, all right. Yeah, I've skimmed over that, I'm not overly into that kind of thing. Let's pop them back up where they came from. Oh dear, let's not ruin it though. There we go. Put them aside, what have we got here? Oh, the cases are, oh, that's actually interesting. I like the Never Settle, I don't think we need that bit on it, but. I like the sort of never settle etching. 
I'll check that probably in a second. The cable, again, they, they do do nice accessories and products and that's the cable itself. And then the charging brick, that's pretty hefty. I forget how many watts is this gonna be? I forget what their special wattage is actually. I think it's about 30, can I see it on the... Yeah, 30 watts, so 50% in 23 minutes, they claim. So leave that in, I think that's the lot. So again, let's pop that to the side. So what makes it actually a pro and makes it an actual flagship device for a change? Um, there's a few things. One of them you may have seen on the package there is wireless charging is in this device. I think it's the first OnePlus device that's had wireless charging. It's got an actual IP rating, I think 68. Can I see that anywhere on the specs very quickly? Uh, I cannot but it does have an actual IP rating. If you've not watched my unboxings before, I'm still scanning to see if I can see it. If you've not watched my unboxings before, they're, they're not always super organized, if I'm very honest. I've got back from work literally like 10 minutes ago. I've grabbed the box, it's a massive big box that it came up, but I guess it's because of the weird shape of the box I just took it out of. Um, and I ripped it around, let's go, let's film. Um, and actually, by, so I'm doing this video slightly different to the unboxes I normally do because it is, I mean, it's coming for half nine right now. Actually, I'm gonna start turning, booting this thing up if we can. If that is, in fact, the power button. Yeah, there we go. Um, so it's coming off half nine now. I'm back in work in the morning. I don't wanna spend ages doing this. So what I'm doing, I'm doing the unboxing element now, and then I'm gonna use it through till tomorrow evening when I'm gonna film the sort of first impressions. Um, and all, yeah, what I was originally going to say was I will be much more prepared for the actual review, I promise. And if already you're annoyed by me just waffling on, maybe wait for the review because I'll have a lot more detail and specific specs and things in that. I mean, I've still got specs that we'll go through in a second. Um, where was I? Yeah, so why is it a flagship? So it's got wireless charging, it's got an IP rating that I can't bloody see on the spec sheet off the top of my head, but I will have it. Um, it's got much better cameras than OnePlus normally have, apparently. It's got 120 hertz refresh rate on the screen, and the screen itself is 1440 by 3168, which is 513 pixels per inch. That's pretty good. I mean, first impressions, that looks really nice, I would say. There's not a lot of bezel to it either. Um, I'm not a fan of wraparound screen. I think you catch it too often with your fingers, but I'm intrigued to see how I get on with a big phone again. Um, and already I'm thinking, oh, this thing feels huge. Let's just try popping it in because it also feels very slippy right now. I've got kind of dry hands because of the whole COVID-19 situation and you're washing your hands so often, you're putting alcohol gel, they've gone a bit dry, um, which won't help, I suppose. And that feels good now. That is, that is nice, I like that. that never settle look on the back there. I need to get rid of that sticker, obviously. And that now also, I mean, there's still a little bit of a camera, but even with, <laughs> wow, even with the case on, there's still a slight camera bump. See how that rocks slightly still? Um, okay, so if we have a quick look around, it looks like so we've got the power button on the right-hand side. It looks like we've got the usual sort of ringer slider. There we go, look, which honestly, I never really use. My phone almost always stays on vibrate. And maybe if I get more used to it, there are times where it probably benefit for it being on actual ringer. Um, on the other side, we have the volume rocker. See that? Um, underneath, we've got the USB charging port, which I've already mentioned. And I guess that's a solar, is that just a singular speaker? Can we see what the speakers are? Oh no, it says stereo speakers. Uh, there is no 3.5 mil jack. Doesn't bother me at all. I've not used a 3.5 mil jack for I don't know how long. Um, what they have done is they've opted away from the pop-up camera and they've gone to the pinhole camera, which I think I'm okay with. Um, we'll see what the quality, I haven't seen a couple of photos from it. It didn't look good. So we'll see, we'll see. So actually at this point, that's all we're doing. And then via the magic of editing, I'll have been using this for about 10 hours and I'll be able to give you a bit more of a first impression. So I'm back uh, and it is quarter past six now, the day after what you just watched. Um, so I've been using it all day at work. Um, but first of all, let me go through finishing off some of the other specs because I only mentioned half of them. 
the processor is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865, which I think is seven nanometer. It's got an optical processor. Sorry, the chipset is the 865. So the processor is quad, is, uh, quad optical. Cryo 585, basically, um, at all different speeds and things. The GPU is an Adreno 650. This one has eight gig of RAM. You can get it with 12 gig of RAM. This one is 128 gig of storage, and you can get it with um, 256. This year it's only 100 pounds more, and maybe I should have done that, but I stuck with just the eight gig. I don't know, you, do you really need 12 gig? Has anyone sort of proved you need 12 gig of RAM that it really helps? But at the same time, for only £100 more, maybe I should have. Um, it's got the UFS 3.0 uh, file system. Uh, Geekbench, I have not yet run Geekbench. Let's get that going while, because I don't know how long that might take, to be honest. So we've got Geekbench, Geekbench 5 running. I've mentioned the ring of switch. There's no SD card slot. There's no 3.5mm headphone jack. It is IP68. Um, it obviously has uh, it obviously has NFC. I've mentioned stereo speakers. I think it's got a dual SIM, and it's a different format than I've seen before. It's like one plate with a SIM that can go one side, a SIM that can go the other. I'm fairly sure. I've not tried it, but that's just that's how it looks. It does have apt X if that's important to anybody. It told me that when I connected to my uh, car Bluetooth, it said apt X supported or something like that. Um, I think I went through the screen pretty much. We'll come back to the cameras. I can't remember, I mentioned the battery, the charge. You don't mention that it's 4,510 milliamp hours, so it's up 510 on the OnePlus 7 Pro. Uh, so that's quite good. I've mentioned wireless charging, definitely. I think that's most of the hardware covered. Um, it's still in Geekbench 5, obviously. I'll mention it's on Android 10, Oxygen OS 10, which generally I quite like. Um, I want to show you something though that's a problem with the launch and I can't do that till Geekbench is finished. So let's carry on. So in fact, what it's doing, let's move on to the cameras then. So there's three obvious lenses, but there's actually a fourth one just there, look, which I believe the fourth one is the, is the five megapixel f2.4 depth sensor. Um, but the others are, so the main camera is a 48 megapixel f1.8 25 millimeter which is sort of regular wide angle like you get on most. It's got laser autofocus, it's got optical image stabilization. Then there's a telephoto lens, which is eight megapixel f2.4. That's also got optical image stabilization. That's uh, three times optical zoom. Um, and then the last one is a 48 megapixel f2.2 13 millimeter ultra wide. Now let's start with that, I suppose. The ultra wide, I was, what I was pleased to see is that all of the lenses actually have similar kind of strong colors and um, that's the word I'm looking for, exposure and things like that. They all, they all look on a similar level. I have had some phones in the past where the ultra wide might not be a strong color or something like that, but these all look pretty good. The telephoto seemed pretty good as well. It seemed quite uh, a decent image at three times optical. But the main lens, that's the one you're gonna spend most of your time using. I was, I was really impressed. It had good, strong colors. Um, detail looked good. Uh, even directly into the sun, I took one photo basically facing right into the sun and actually it handled it really well, I thought. Uh, the video, it seemed a little stuttery as I was kind of panning. I did realize when I got home that I'd left it on like 4K mode, which normally I wouldn't film on a phone with 4K and if I'd known I would have switched it to 1080p. You'll have to check the actual main review. And all of this, check the main review. These are just some first thoughts. For, you know, I'm not even doing like low light tests or anything. Um, I was impressed by the image stabilization though when I was filming. I, I filmed a bit while I was in the car. And I mean, you can see how much the bonnet sort of is bouncing around. And obviously my arm does a bit of stabilization in itself, but I just think it's really steady, really steady. Look at the van in front, it barely moves really. Um, the front facing camera seemed pretty good. It's, I didn't mention, I think that's 16 megapixel. Uh, yep, 16 megapixel f2.5 wide angle. Possibly a couple of them seem to be a little underexposed, maybe. Uh, and the portrait mode, at this point I would just say was okay. You can see some weird edges down sort of the left side of my face here and the left side of my chest, which it's just not got it quite right. Um, I did a little bit of video. 
So it was supposed to be a rest day because I was just knackered yesterday and the day before cycling, legs were shot, but how can you stay in on a day like this? It's beautiful. So there she is, I have to grab the bike, grab my new, my new sleeveless top and head on out. And also it gives me the opportunity to test the camera in the OnePlus 8 Pro. This obviously is a selfie camera, the front facing camera, and gives me an opportunity to test the microphone. There we go. I don't know what it sounds like yet because it's the first time you've used it, so you're hearing it the first time I do. But hopefully I'll have some comments for you in a second about it. And I would say that looks pretty good. The mic, I would say, is pretty good. If you're a vlogger or something like that, then I think that's that's going to do the trick. Uh, you see there, the, oh, I don't know if you did see that, but the in-screen fingerprint sensor I have found generally reliable. The only thing being, make sure you wake the screen first. There we go. Reliable and quick. And here is the Geekbench 5 score. And I'm jumping all over the place at the moment. Here's the Geekbench 5 score. Now, unfortunately, because Geekbench 5 is quite new, I'm not actually sure where that fits. I can't remember. I honestly can't remember. I should maybe have installed Geekbench 4 because I'd have had a better idea with that. But again, well, you might know where that fits, but watch for the main review and I will have a bit more context around that with other scores and things. Um, so the operating system, as you can see, I've got gestures. I'm actually running Nova Launch at the moment. And it's so fast and slick. It's really nice, really nice. Um, but what I want to show you is if I change the default launcher, default home, default home app, and we switch it back to OnePlus's launcher, that looks okay. That's fine. Everything's nice and smooth. You've got Google Now, Google Home, Google, down the side, fine. Um, we're on dark mode at the moment, I could have pointed that out perhaps. But can you see that widget for my Beyond Pod? And if I try and resize, what? What is that about? Now, my fitness pal, you think, well, that looks all right, but actually, look how much space that's taken. And again, I can't. I can't make that any smaller. It, it's taking all, why, why is it taking that much space? So I don't quite know why, I don't quite know why it's like that, which is basically why I've had to, I mean, I've been happy to, I kind of wanted to stick to the, to the default launcher for the review. That's what I normally prefer to do. But you can't when it's doing things like that. Um, but yeah, really fast. So, is there anything I've mentioned? Dark mode. Yeah, there's a slight delay on the launch. If I go home, it kind of zoop and then it loads the launcher. Whereas with the original launch, it literally whoop, and it and it would sort of whoop back into the icon. It's not really something you would notice or worry about, though. I mean, that's that's pretty smooth still. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Oh, I did. I mean, just kind of a. Something else I noticed, setting the phone up. Now, normally I install LastPass, that's the first thing I log into. And as I install apps, I use that to log me back into the apps. I've not needed to this time. Google's pretty much logged me into everything. Now, some people might be, what? I want to, and, you know, and I think, I'm sure at some point I said, yeah, yeah, I'd prefer you do that. And some people might prefer it didn't, but I prefer it too. It's basically logged me into, you know, you get the, when it opens up, you want to use, yeah, fill the, fill the password and, and you're in. Really? Um, let's. Go to well, I will do YouTube, I suppose. I was gonna. So I was watching Netflix, for example, and I noticed that when you go full screen, it doesn't actually go full screen. So obviously that screen at the top where the notifications and things. <laughs> um, this is a little different to anything I've done before. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit scared because one of those things. There's kind of no return. Is that if you get it wrong, that's what you're gonna look like. Um, so you might have heard, it says that, look, pinch to, pinch to zoom and fill the screen. Um, the speakers, I think the speakers actually are really very loud. They're a little bit tinny, so I don't think they sound as good as my Pixel 4, but they're probably, and I've not done the sound, I've got a sound meter, watch the review for the actual results. It does sound quite loud. Um, like I, I think I think my uh, theme tune starts in a minute. I'll turn the volume back up just so you can hear how loud it is. But if I do the pinch to zoom, Ah, okay, so YouTube has filled the whole screen and it's just left the pinhole, which actually 
probably the best way to go. Right, let's just turn this up for a second. The mic's up there, that's all. So yeah, I think, I think the, the volume is definitely good. It passes the kettle test. I can hear my podcast when I've got my kettle boiling. The screen, I mean, I think it, it does, it looks fantastic. 120 hertz, 2K, I don't actually know what. Yeah, that's only, yeah, I don't think I did this in 4K or anything. You don't see me cut my hair in 4K. Um, but in, I mean, I suppose I can show you real quick. In Netflix, when I fill the screen, I mean, you can't see too because it's dark, but you see how it's got the black bar? So now you've got a slightly uneven, almost no bezel that side, big bezel on that side, because it's not including the bit that's got the pinhole camera in, which is not, it's not particularly an issue, but just thought it interesting. Um, so yeah, screen amazing, speakers pretty loud. Um, cameras, they get a thumbs up at this point. Uh, so I guess overall, I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying it. I don't know. So I went back to the smaller screen, the smaller device, and I did, and I do really like just the nice smaller, like when I'm out cycling, it's, it, it has been nice having a smaller thing in the pocket, back pocket of my jersey. This is a huge hulking big thing. Um, but at the same time, at work, I'm watching Netflix. This is a lovely big screen, nice loud speakers. Um, and just generally, it is it is quite nice to have the big screen back. Um, I know there's already been a comment on one of the forums I use. I'm like, I thought you were saying the Pixel 4 was your ideal size. And I think to an extent, sometimes everyone just likes a bit of change, don't they? And I, and I do like, and I, I don't know, I'm thinking I'll probably keep the Pixel 4. There will be times that a smaller device is more suitable. Like if I go out jogging perhaps. But so far, I'm really enjoying the nice big uh, screen on this OnePlus 8 Pro. So that's probably, I've waffled on far too long. We're probably up to like 20 odd minutes by now, if not longer, which wasn't my intention on just an unboxing, but maybe because it's a first impression rather than just a first look, I have, I've been able to give you like a mini review at this point. Um, there's a reasonable chance this becomes my main device. I'm not gonna rush out or hurry to get the review done. At the moment, I'm thinking I will use this device for a good week or so, if not a little bit longer. Um, and then I'll get the actual review filmed uh, with a lot more detail, like I say. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know any questions you might have that you want me to answer either in the comments or in the review video in a week or so's time. Um, if you haven't already, I'm sure you have, make sure you subscribe, check out some of the other videos, hit that thumbs up button and the bell, as everybody says. I know, for some reason, it annoys, I don't know why that annoys people. If you've enjoyed my video and you want to support me, that helps. Why would you not want to help me? Anyway. Um, so, for now, my name's Andy, and I'll catch you all again soon.